guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome I'm so happy you found us I'm Lisa and this is creativity and inspiration today we are gonna do some fun easy DIY toys for our fur babies we're also going to talk about some dangers that we need to watch out for and what to look for in a really good quality dog toy so come along with me and let's just get into this because it's going to be a wolf good time. Sorry, bad joke. Okay, what I thought we would start with is the toy that I actually did last year, it, which we took a sock and a water bottle and made this great toy. And it's such a popular toy that it's been smushed flat. So I thought to start this video, why not show you how much they loved it, how good of a shape it's still in, and how to change it, and I'll link this video above. Above. So all you do to change the water bottle inside is untie one end. It's that simple. There's no holes. It stayed together well, and they have loved this thing. Okay. And then you just pull out the bottle and look at that that is how much this has been loved it is chewed flat and I'm just and I'm just going to replace it with this tea bottle and again it just slides in the sock that I cut at the top and bottom so I could tie it and, this, and I made it where it goes all the way in so there's no part of the bottle seen at all. Then you just come back and double tie the knot that you untied. And boom, a brand new toy for another year. Pretty cool. Okay, our dogs love to play tug of war all the time. That's just a fun thing they do. And I have little dogs, so big dogs, you know, love to play it as well. But you need strong ropes. And you might say, okay, a rope is good. Ropes are great. And this is an example of a really strong rope. It's thick. There's a lot, you know, it's heavy duty. And it will withstand a lot of chewing. But even heavy ropes... And this is another example. Even heavy, thick ropes like this can be torn apart and frayed by dogs. And this, on this end, then becomes dangerous because when these little strings pulls out, it gets caught in their throat or it can get down in their stomach or their intestine and get stuck and cause all sorts of problems. So for any rope toy, it's always very, very important to watch how much they pull apart if they have fringe on the end, how it comes out. The best kind of rope toy is like this one. There's no fringe on the end. This is a lightsaber toy, but there's no fringe on the end. It's super thick, but even look here, you can see where they've been chewing it. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see here. Okay, there you go. You can see where it's starting to fray where they've been chewing right there. And you know, big dogs, little dogs, sharp teeth, and you chew that enough, then you're gonna end up with little pieces like on here, and those can get caught. So just always watch your ropes really, really good because ropes are made up of individual fibers. Something better than ropes that you can do at home is fleece. Fleece is not made up of individual fi fibers, so you don't have that fraying apart. And it's very simple to make your own rope for your dog. Now I have four uh, strips of fleece. I'm only gonna use three, so I'm gonna set one aside. And tie a knot with the three ends, with the three strips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this fourth piece and come in and tie a knot. And I'm just going to tie it as close to the top of the three as I can get. But I want to make sure it's far enough down that as they play and pull and tug on it, it doesn't come undone. Okay, I will trim the tie up. All you do is come in with your scissors and just 
tie it. And even trimming fleece, like trimming these tails off of the tie, they don't fray. Okay, so that's how you want your end to look. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the three individual pieces now, and you're, but you're just taking the outside wings, the outside pieces, and going under the center piece, and under the center piece, and under. So it's back and forth rotating between the two outside pieces, and you're just going under the center piece, and just make sure you keep it tight because you want it really tight all the way down. And you might have to do it a couple of times. Start over. That's fine. Make sure you keep pulling it. And just side under, side under, side under. Until you just really don't have any room because you're going to need to tie it or sew it at the other end. Okay, till you get something like this. Now you may have to undo a couple of ravels so you can tie it. But then you take one and lay it down like that. Take the middle, take the middle um, piece, lay it flat, and tie your two outer pieces into a tie like that. And then pull it up. Make sure your braid stays and then knot them. Okay. And then that's it. And then you can trim off the middle piece tail because it's secure. Oops. Okay. And there you have a rope that they can tug on. Plus there's a big end for them to bite on and an end for you to hold on to. And this doesn't fray. It doesn't have the individual pieces like a rope. So that is always. Fleece always makes a good toy for a dog. We're going to talk about stuffed toys. And we have two here. This is one that came in one of those dog stockings from either Target or Walmart. And then this is one that I bought off of a store online that sells dog toys. Okay, I'm picky about my toys. This one, I'm happy with the quality. The fabric is thick. They can pull on it. And as you see, there's no rips or tears. So that means it's good quality. Because my dogs, one, chew on everything. And two, they like to pull and tug. So this is a really good product. So I'm happy with this product that I got. This one came in one of the stockings, like I said, from Target or Walmart. And the fabric, you know, it's meant to be an inexpensive dog toy, which is great. I understand everybody's on a budget, and I understand that things are super expensive right now. So these stockings are great. However, these are super thin, and, I mean, a dog could bite through this fabric, rip it the first time they play with it, okay? Also, the plastic toys that come in uh, these, you might think, oh, those are thick. My dogs have broken them off, and my dogs are little, like 6 pounds, 17 pounds. So they're small dogs, and they have literally chewed the plastic apart within the first 10 minutes. So be aware and watch your dog, because you, we don't want our dogs swallowing plastic or eating fabric. And worse with stuffed toys, and you always need to check these toys after a good play session, is to make sure there's no rips along the seams or anywhere where the stuffing's coming out. Like this one I was going through. This is one I've sewed up before and it's coming undone. And as you can see there is a um, rip on the side right there. And there's a couple more where the side's just splitting. So it's time this toy gets retired. And as you can tell, it looks like it's been played with a lot. But I want to talk about the stuffing inside these toys. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this open. This is the most dangerous thing for your dog. It can get stuck in their throat, and they can choke. It can get in their stomach. It absorbs fluids. It can just kill them, okay? Bottom line, don't play around. The minute you see this stuff start poking through, or even before, if you even see just like seams starting to thin, thin out, or if the fabric feels like, oh, one good tear and it's gone, go ahead and get rid of the toy. You don't want them eating this, okay? But before you get rid of it, if it has a squeaker in it that still works, I've got an idea for you to make your own. And it's super simple. Again, you can do this with fleece. If you have fleece, you can do this with fleece. 
jeans. Blue jeans also make excellent uh, toys, like if you're making a stuffed toy, okay? They do fray though, so you have to watch the strings and the fraying. Fleece is the absolute best because it doesn't fray because of the way fleece is actually created. But blue jeans are good because they hold up to teeth. They're not so, you know, they don't get holes in them so much. So, if you say you wanted to make a mask-shaped toy for your dog, right? How cute is that? Um, instead of stuffing it with stuffing, just leave it plain. But what you can do is if the squeaker is still good in that toy that's busted, cut the toy open and you can do this over a trash bag, over your trash can. Just make sure none of this goes on the floor. Okay, and find the squeaker in here. Okay. Find the squeaker. It's normally just something that looks like that. Put it inside. Put it inside your new toy like that. I don't know if you can see. It's in there. See? It's in there. Put it inside there and then sew around. Oops. Sew around your edges, or if you can't, if you don't have a machine, hand stitch, or use fabric glue. But if you use fabric glue, make sure it's permanent, and it'll say permanent on there. This is permanent. It's both paper and fabric. If you watch my glue video, this is the best glue. But if you buy a fabric glue at the store, make sure you get one that's permanent. This says no sew fabric glue. So you would think, okay, this one would be perfect. No, go keep reading. It says temporary fabric adhesive. This is just to hold something till you can get it sewed. You want to look for a fabric glue that says permanent fabric adhesion. So this would be the glue you want to get if you're going to glue your toy together. But doing that, make sure you put all the glue on the, all the inside edges make sure none gets out on the outside at all and uh, because we don't want them you know eating glue or licking glue or anything like that okay best thing you could do is do a running stitch a simple stitch or sew it but this is such a cute toy it's a dog mask toy I love this and I'll show you the completed toy at the end so that's something. Always, if the squeaker is still working and the toys that are broken, pull it out. It makes great, um, you can repurpose it. It makes great new toys. Another thing is, if you don't want to do that, if you want it stuffed, stuff with plastic bags, okay? They're soft enough to stuff a toy with. They'll uphold if they start to tear, your dog is not going to eat it because they're going to pull out a whole bag. And also, they make noise. So you could even not even wrinkle it up. Just cut a pattern to fit whatever kind of toy you're making. Put it in the center and you have a toy like that. So there's a couple of options for your dogs. I really like this option too because it gets rid of that stuffing, but you want a softer toy. This is a great option. We have a lot of these um, that we collect from going to the grocery store and everywhere else. Stuff your dog's toys with them. Also, they're great for stuffing dog beds or dog pillows as well. So this is a great idea, great way to keep them, you know, use them again and again. Because even for bed outside, if the bed gets wet or if your dog is wet and comes in and lays on their bed and the outside's ruined, cut it open, take out the bags. If they're wet, just dry them because they're plastic bags. And then stuff another bed, stuff another toy or whatever. So guys, I hope you like these fun and easy DIY dog toys and I hope you picked up some him helpful hints along the way. Be sure and watch all the way till the end of the video because I will show you my dog mask toy. Take care. Be sure and hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell because there's more great videos coming your way. Also, also be sure to leave me a comment below if you are a dog owner. What type of toy is your favorite? A squeaky toy? If you've tried the bottle toy, did you like that? Or would you like a 
bad crinkle toy for your dog. Let me know. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Come on, please. Bring it to mom.